Yes, crypto can be very serious with geniuses working on important world-changing research and cryptography and protocol design, but it's not all like that. It doesn't have to be like that. And it's good that there's another side that it's flipping coins called Mother and Bowden. A part of crypto I'm very drawn to is that most people here respect humans enough to trust each person is the best suited to decide what to do with their own money. In TradFi, we have Gary Gensler protecting consumers and putting up barriers saying only accredited investors can participate in some markets. In crypto, everyone has access to a global and open financial system where they can swap coins, provide liquidity to a DEX, vote in a DAO, borrow tokens against crypto collateral, buy an NFT of Trump's mugshot, and issue a meme coin named after their cat. And I think that's all beautiful. Build apps and store assets with safe, smart contract accounts, which secure over $100 billion. Soroban on Stellar, a smart contract platform to build DeFi for the real world. More on them later in the show. Welcome to Crypto with Kami, where we go through all the main headlines in crypto and DeFi in the past week in 30 minutes or less. This is the show for the week starting June 3rd. We'll talk about meme coins, US Democrats about face for crypto, ETH ETFs, and tokenization news. Starting with meme coins, as there was an interesting debate this week on whether meme coins are a net positive or a net negative for the ecosystem. And the debate also included the concept of elites versus populists. For context, we've seen this wave of celebrity themed meme coins being issued recently. Um, with a Caitlyn, uh, Caitlyn Jenner coin, uh, uh, Trump is <laughs> is accumulating meme coins. People are calling this is a top signal. But anyways, the main uh, celebrity coin issued recently is Iggy Azalea's Mother. So Mother surged to a market cap of over 200 million just one week after it launched. And it was this token that spurred the interesting debate I mentioned earlier. So the spark was set by a crypto VC who said, if mother breaks into sustainable value creation, now I don't know if he's being, if he's uh, joking or not, but whatever. Um, if mother breaks into sustainable value creation, it'll also be the mother of this cycle's celebrity experimentation. To which Vitalik replied, I'm feeling quite unhappy about this cycle's celebrity experimentation so far. Financialization as a means toward an end I can respect if the end is worthy. For example, healthcare, open source software, art, etc. Financialization as the final product, vomiting emoji. Then Vitalik offers a list of features that a celebrity crypto project needs to have for him to be more willing to respect it. And he says it would have to have some kind of public good goal that that it's serving like an art project or the celebrity's favorite charity and so on. Two, it would have to have some fun mechanics that go beyond just trading a token, like a DAO people can organize around. And three, make something that lasts 10 plus years rather than bubbling around for a few months and then being forgotten. Most of all, he said, the North Star should be to have a project where even if eventually all tokens involved go to zero, the average person who participated is happy to have done so. Iggy responded to this with a very disturbing meme of her breastfeeding baby Vitalik. Uh, very disturbing, don't wanna show it. But so Vitalik's tweet and the response set off many different opinions that are broadly grouped between those who believe meme coins are very close to scams, where the issuer looks to enrich themselves off of their fans and their followers. They believe crypto would likely be better off without the pointless meme coins as they make innocent people lose money, they scar them and cause them to leave crypto forever. They believe that experimentation and capital should be put to more productive projects. Joining Vitalik on this camp are Uniswap founder Hayden, where he said that the underlying purpose and value of the tech goes way beyond financial games. And the best builders in the space are motivated by positive social change. 
So yeah, he he initially said uh, he was on the like meme comes are bad camp, but then he tweeted this good and bad things happen on the internet. But um, anyways, there th the point is the same. There's this group of people who think that meme coins are a net negative. Um, Ryan Sean Adams from Bankless said populist leaders are shilling dog shit pumps and getting rich along with their followers. They'll dunk their They'll dunk the OGs with mob support, getting addicted to the Twitter cloud. They'll be geniuses for a while. Some will fly too close to the sun. Then when shit hit, hits the fan and people get wrecked, they'll skulk away, shirking all responsibility from the mess they've created. Well, the OGs will be the ones to stick around and clean up and people will yell at them for not doing more to speak up. It, it feels like he's speaking from personal experience. Um, but anyways he he's a part of this group who thinks meme coins are uh, negative they scar people they um make people lose money um they are not any they're not innovating in any meaningful way and the other group are those who defend meme coins and say they're not positive they believe those like vitalik and hayden sound elitist because they're telling people how they should use crypto when the entire point is that crypto is permissionless and should and can be used however people choose, including for useless shitcoins. This group will sometimes defend speculation and believe that meaningful innovation can emerge from tokens with no real utility. The Solana influencer Ansem is one of the best examples in this group. He said Hayden's response comes across as we're smarter and better than you, and this is the correct way to do things, so you need to respect us. He also said he doesn't think people entering crypto purely to speculate at first is bad um, because many people started that way but learned fundamentals later. He made the point that historically speculation in crypto has preceded meaningful innovation and he believes meme coins will too. So first, I'd love to address some points of Vitalik's initial tweet. It's odd to hear that Vitalik doesn't respect financialization as a final product, only as a means to an end, like supporting lofty industries, uh, including healthcare and art. It's, it's really strange to me because most of the activity that's happening on Ethereum is financialization as a final product. The top Ethereum protocols by fees are Uniswap, Aave, Maker, and four other DEXs. These are all DeFi protocols, which are primarily being used to trade. DEXs are used to buy and sell tokens. Lending protocols are, are used to take out leverage loans in order to trade, or they're used to get a return on crypto assets. That's all finance as the end product. DeFi is way too young yet to be used for any meaningful productive use. Like these loans are not serving to, um, to, uh, build a, a business or, or take out a mortgage in most cases. Of course, like, yes, you'll have examples of cases where DeFi loans or DeFi swaps are being put to production, productive real world use cases. You'll have those examples, but 90%, maybe 80% being generous of DeFi transactions are meant to facilitate speculation. That's the reality of where we're at today. So just very odd to hear this from Vitalik. So because he says he doesn't respect financialization as the end product, he doesn't respect meme coins that are just made to speculate. They should have some higher goal. And the North Star is that people who participated should be happy to have done so, even if it goes to zero. So I definitely agree with the North Star. But I disagree that the only way to get there is with meme coins that have some higher goal, like donating to charity. I believe the large majority of people buying and selling meme coins do so with the full understanding that they're playing in a casino. Everyone in the shitcoin game is putting their chips in a different meme, hoping that one of them will become the next Doge or Pepe, or at least that they'll be able to sell to the next guy when it goes to zero. Sometimes they'll be able to sell and make a profit. Other times they'll be stuck with worthless bags, but they understand the game and most of them will have a blast playing it. Memeing with other DJs on Telegram, shitposting on Twitter, etc. So 
Yes, crypto can be very serious with geniuses working on important world-changing research and, cri and cryptography and protocol design, but it's not all like that. It doesn't have to be like that. And it's good that there's another side that it's flipping coins called Mother and Bowden. A part of crypto I'm very drawn to is that most people here respect humans enough to trust each person is the best suited to decide what to do with their own money. In TradFi, we have Gary Gensler protecting consumers and putting up barriers, saying only accredited investors can participate in some markets. In crypto, everyone has access to a global and open financial system where they can swap coins, provide liquidity to a DEX, vote in a DAO, borrow tokens against crypto collateral, buy an NFT of Trump's mugshot, and issue a meme coin named after their cat. And I think that's all beautiful. If we're about to start patronizing newcomers to the space on what on-chain activity is worthy and what's not, we've lost a plot. And I have to agree with Ansem that it does sound a bit elitist. Beside the fact that there doesn't need to be a reason behind swapping meme coins for fun, I actually think there is value in speculation. Speculation draws new people in. They'll come, make a bet on a coin, add some liquidity to the ecosystem, stress test some, some projects, and maybe they'll leave, but maybe they'll stay and become long-term crypto holders and users. And also just maybe something beyond memes and shit coins comes out of this. Remember, many of DeFi's largest projects were funded by ICOs, but unlike ICOs, which made grant promises most projects weren't able to keep, while some had preferential prices for VCs and team members, at least meme coins aren't pretending to be anything they're not. They're tokens with no value and no utility, but most of the time, the entire supply is issued to the market on the same terms for all buyers. Vitalik and other crypto OGs may look down on meme coins, but I think radical honesty and anyone being able to participate in a free market on equal terms are pretty cypherpunk and lofty ideals indeed. Protocol 20 introduces Soribon, which is Stellar's cutting edge smart contracts platform. This creates new surface area for innovation and provides new opportunities for developers to build protocols and products that create access to everyday financial services. So it means a gradual increase in transaction capacity and a chance to fine tune applications. And it's the most transformative upgrade to the Stellar network to date. Have you heard about SAFE? They're not just pioneers in crypto custody, but they're also leading the way with smart accounts. With SAFE, managing your crypto is smarter and safer than ever. They've secured over $100 billion in total value and are available in more than 15 networks. SAFE is also revolutionizing the industry with their full compatibility with ERC-4337, making it super easy to integrate wallets into your daily crypto activities and for crypto enthusiasts, SAFE has something special, the SAFE Pass Activity Rewards Program. Launching soon, it's a fantastic way to engage and earn rewards. So what are you waiting for? Visit safe.global, sign up for the SAFE Pass Activity Rewards Program and secure your spot at SAFECON during the Berlin Blockchain Week. Be part of the transition that's setting a new standard in the world of custody. Okay, so we have a few uh, tokenization news. The House Financial Services Committee held a hearing titled Next Generation Infrastructure, How Tokenization of Real-World Assets Will Facilitate Efficient Markets. U.S. lawmakers heard testimony from several industry experts, including Nadine Chakar, the global head of DTCC Digital Assets, who said that tokenization for established markets such as U.S. equities and treasuries could have transformative potential. Um, and then there was also Carlos Domingo, co-founder and CEO of Securitize, the broker of BlackRock's tokenized treasuries fund. And he shared insights into how his company's efforts in created regulated platforms for tokenizing and trading uh, financial assets on public blockchains has turned out. Um, other tokenization news is that this Turkish bank, uh, Mission Bank, it, it's one of the country's first new banks, and they launched a real-world asset tokenization platform on the Avalanche network. They describe it as bank-secured end-to-end tokenization solution, enabling institutions to tokenize and distribute assets to investors globally. 
Um, and f another tokenization news is, is pretty cool. Uh, Galaxy Digital has issued a multi-million dollar loan against a Stradivarius violin from the 1700s. The loan was granted to Yatsu, co-founder of Animoca Brands. Um, Sue purchased the rare violin at an auction for over $9 million last year. Uh, we also have a feature. Uh, this is a really great one if you just want to get caught up on what's going on in the U.S. Uh, politics front uh, on crypto. Um, so with uh, this feature on the Democrats puzzling crypto stance, we go over the paper. We go over the play by play in the story, but the key takeaway is that, well, there appears to be more Democrat lawmakers who are voting pro crypto. Biden is not fighting with Trump over who is the next crypto president. Um, and he appears to be okay just being the anti crypto candidate. Um, next, we have a few ETF news. Uh, interestingly, leveraged ETH ETFs entered the market before spot ETFs were approved. This is because they use the futures, um, uh, like Ethereum futures, which are already traded in the US. So this is ProShares is issuing a 2X short and 2X long ETH ETF. Um, in other ETH ETF news, Gary Gensler says the spot ETH ETF launch will take some time. Remember that we're still missing the SEC's approval of the ETH ETF applicant S1 registration. In other big kind of TradFi uh, news, Robinhood acquired veteran crypto exchange Bitstamp. This is this is huge. They, um, they, they bought the exchange for 200 million and it just points to Robinhood's commitment in crypto. Next, uh, Vanek projects $22,000 dollars for ETH price in 2030. And we have a, a, a few really good features. We wrote about how Bitcoin miners are struggling post having their reserve levels are plunging to the lowest since uh, 2021. We have a really great dive on Telegram's open network ecosystem and how it's really uh, soared so far this year. And finally, we looked into how many users Farcaster actually has. So a popular Dune dashboard shows they have 55,000 daily active users, but an API shows that 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 figure may actually be a tenth of that at about 5,000 users. So that's it for this week. Uh, let me know what you think about this meme coin debate or about any of the other news that caught your eye and hope to see you all next Friday. Mm -hmm.